elkezdtem most a fölvételt, és azt magyarul tulajdonképpen mondhatom, hogy ez most már a második próba, hiszen aki minket hall, az valószínűtlen, hogy megértené, illetve csak 10 millió 6 milliárdból. Szia Béla, hogy vagy? Szia Dávid! So, we will uh, progress in English. Uh, we thought uh, we would do this uh, little joke to start in Hungarian, as we are both Hungarian. Language. Thank you for uh, being available for this uh, little chat, Béla. Well, thank you for uh, having me. You are uh, at the Santa Fe uh, Institute. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the Institute and about yourself. Well, this is a small uh, private uh, non-profit uh, research organization in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, what we do is uh, high risk, uh, high return uh, research projects. And uh, I'm involved in one of those projects myself, which is called uh, modeling the dynamics of uh, the technological innovation. And uh, another way to say that is that I study the evolution of technology. Uh, more specifically, uh, I'm looking at performance curves. That is how the performance of technologies changes over time and um, see if we can uh, understand the dynamics of the uh, evolution of technology and uh, see if we can predict the future based on historical data. Tell us about quantitative futurism. Well, what that means is to try to predict the future based on things that we can measure. Um, so, for example, if there are these trends that we can quantify, we can look back and see if they have a predictive power and uh, if we can... Uh, try to, uh, if we try to project forward from those trends, uh, how accurate the predictions are. And uh, this will be one of the things I will explore in my talk. You also mentioned a, a website where quantitative data is aggregated for people to explore, right? Right. This is a new experimental database that we've just created at the Santa Fe Institute. And... Uh, The URL is pcdb.santafe.edu. And if you go there, you will find uh, a number of performance curves uh, for a number of technologies. And uh, that's why we call it a performance curve database. So if you just Google that, you uh, should be able to get there and see how the performance of the technologies changed over time. And uh, I want to point out that these are not just uh, information technologies, but a uh, number of other uh, seemingly unrelated technologies that surprisingly follow uh, very similar trends. So that's why we suspect that there is something more common uh, that applies to all technology. And uh, it's not uh, these exponential trends, for example, that we see in information technology are not unique at all. Uh, you can download all of the data for free. And not only that, you can also upload it also for free. Uh, and uh, you can upload it in any format and you can play with your own data sets. You don't even need to sign up for that. Although if you sign up, we'd be very happy uh, to uh, include you as a part of this community. Uh, one way to evaluate uh, these performance curves is to look at their prediction performance. Um, and uh, the way I did this is to pretend that uh, I live in the past and using data available only up to that point in time, try to forecast uh, the future. And uh, if you do that, you can evaluate these uh, forecasts in hindsight. That's why this method is also called hindsight, uh, sorry, hindcasting instead of forecasting. And uh, if you do that, um, you see that uh, different performance curves and different functional forms for those performance curves uh, have very different error distributions. 
is it your opinion or do you have uh, data to analyze if the error distribution is constant i.e if you were not hindcasting but forecasting on the same set of data and you had a reliable hindcasting performance would you get do you think you would get a reliable forecasting performance too uh, I would say it the other way. If you didn't get acceptable hindcasting errors, then you shouldn't use that method for forecasting the future. Okay. Um, the data that you are uh, collecting uh, appear to be similar to the sets and even to some of the graphs that we see in Ray Kurzweil's book, uh, The Singularity is Near. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any differences? There are many similarities, but also there are important differences. Um, we look at more variables um, than uh, the ones that you find in the book. And uh, I think it's very important to distinguish uh, what kind of variables we are looking at. Uh, first, we need to distinguish between performance and prevalence measures. Uh, second, we need to have some measure of uncertainty in these forecasts instead of just point estimates. And uh, I think the Singularity Institute, for example, is trying to do exactly that. Uh, for instance, by this uh, uh, project called the uncertainfuture.com, uh, which is a first step in that direction. And also, uh, what we are trying to do is to look at all these performance curves in uh, a unified framework. Instead of just looking at one curve at a time, we want to pool all the evidence and evaluate multiple curves at the same time. So could you give uh, an example of uh, your first difference that you listed, performance versus prevalence? Yes. Uh, for example, if you look at the number of internet hosts, that's a prevalence measure, how many there are. On the other hand, if you look at, uh, let's say, computing power, or uh, you look at uh, some cost or price measure, uh, that's a performance metric, how good these things are. And uh, I think uh, that's a very important difference. And uh, we have to always keep this in mind, uh, what are we trying to measure? In other words, what you put on the y-axis, it has to be clear what it is. And in our performance curve database, uh, what we have is different performance measures that you can put on the y-axis and see that as a function of not only time on the x-axis, but also these measures of prevalence, uh, for example, uh, some measures of production. This is not the first uh, Singularity Summit that you attend, as I understand. It is the first that you are a speaker at. So what are your expectations uh, for the Singularity Summit in New York? Well, if the past is any guide to the future, uh, I think uh, we can expect uh, very exciting uh, presentations and uh, discussions uh, my experience in the previous uh, summit and also the uh, Accelerating Change conference that was before that is that uh, it's full of uh, very interesting people who have a very particular mindset. And I find that uh, very uh, intellectually stimulating and it's hard to find it in such a high density anywhere else. That's great. Uh, I am also very much looking forward uh, to the event and uh, I hope uh, to meet you there then. Well, thank you, David. I'm looking forward to it.